Hello everybody! It's your friendly digital technology librarian, Christy, here. We have reached another Friday, so of course I have another Film Rec Friday ready for everybody out there. Uh, so earlier this week we celebrated National Coffee Day, and then today is actually International Coffee Day. So as quite a lover of coffee myself, I thought, you know, there are a ton of movies in which coffee plays kind of a pivotal role, whether it be the drink itself, or a coffee shop, or, uh, you know, an adventure to get coffee in the first place. I mean, it's oddly enough kind of a character in tons of different movies, and I thought why not put together a little list where we feature films that all have coffee playing a major role in the movie. Um, so I hope that people out there really enjoy this list. It's a little bit different from what we usually do, uh, but I think I think we've put together some really interesting movies. A couple of these I'd never even heard of before I started looking into this week, and I really, really love those films in particular. So here's hoping you enjoy them as well. As always, all of these movies are available entirely for free with the use of your Milan Berlin library card, and they are available on our three video services, which are Clevenets Overdrive, Hoopla Digital, and Canopy. So without any further ado, let's get into those recs. My first recommendation for this week is from Clevenets Overdrive, and it's for a documentary called A Film About Coffee. Now, a film about coffee is beautifully, beautifully filmed, and it is quite a straightforward documentary. There aren't any twists and turns. It's not some completely unique take on the world of coffee. No, it's really just this love letter to a beverage that is found everywhere across the globe. And you can really tell that the filmmakers are absolute coffee lovers, and I really with regard to this kind of a film, I really, really appreciate when the filmmaker lets that love come across. Um, it's someone who knows coffee, who is familiar with and wants to share that, you know, avid knowledge and adoration for something with an audience. Um, so as I was mentioning, a film about coffee is pretty standard. Uh, you talk about the history of coffee, which I always find fascinating. It's sort of pervasive spread across the globe. I mean, it's not like you're only going to find this in one small region. It's not a niche product. This is everywhere. And how it goes from, you know, Tokyo to Portland to Milan, Ohio. I mean, it's, it's fascinating the journey this drink has made. Um, it talks to people who love coffee just as anyone in the audience might, but it also talks about people who have made their living off of this, this bean that they roast. It's, it talks to artisan roasters, it talks to baristas, it talks to scholars who just happen to be very, very familiar with the story of this bean. Um, it's smart and it's interesting. And it's always accessible. It's never trying to be too academic about anything, but it's also not dumbed down in any way. And I really found it really, really fascinating. I mean, I've watched documentaries about coffee and, you know, artisan work with coffee before, but there's just something really calm and enjoyable about this particular film. I don't know if it's the way it is filmed, because I, as I mentioned at the very beginning, it is really beautiful. It's like, if you've ever followed those channels that follow, you know, individual artisan designers and whatnot, where every shot is really lovingly done, there's that sort of spin on this. And it's, it's only one, one hour, a little tiny bit over that. Uh, so it's a quick, quick watch, but in addition to it only being over an hour, it goes quickly. If that makes sense, it's, you don't feel like you're watching a documentary. You just feel like you're being told a story. And I really always appreciate that when a filmmaker makes a documentary in that manner. So if you are interested in sort of how those beans get to your cup, if you want to have a conversation about coffee, 
I think that a film about coffee is the perfect documentary for you. It is really, really wonderful and wonderfully made. Can't recommend it enough. All right, moving along to my next recommendation. This one you can find on Hoopla Digital and on Canopy, actually. And it's one of those movies I mentioned earlier that I had never even heard about before I started putting together this list. And that is for a lovely German film called A Coffee in Berlin. Now, this one is super hard to classify. Uh, there are moments that are absolutely hilarious in this where I really, truly did laugh out loud. Uh, there are scenes that are so absurd as to be thoroughly ridiculous. But there's also a pretty strong thread of both melancholy and tragedy running through the entire thing. And I, I kind of hate the word tragicomedy because I think that oversimplifies so much. But if there was ever a movie that I feel defines that, this is it. I mean, it's rare for me to both laugh so hard and then to also get really pretty choked up as much as I did within this. Um, and, and the juxtaposition of those two emotions was very rapid. Like I, one scene I'm thinking about in particular, I don't want to do spoilers or anything, but there's one, one scene where I think I was laughing super hard five minutes before I was like grabbing for the tissues, like to, to wipe up the tears. Cause it was such an abrupt switch in tone and it still worked. And that's the thing that I really found fascinating about this film. It is so absurd in spots and yet it doesn't feel super presentational. It feels pretty organic. Like the acting is really solid, but it's not even about the acting. It, it's, it's just the way the film in its entirety is presented while you have super outrageous, ridiculous, absurdist things happening. At no point did I ever feel like that's so ridiculous. It would never happen in real life. These are things that you potentially could have experienced or something similar to. And that ability to pull someone's empathy or sympathy, I found really, really, really fascinating. Uh, so in A Coffee in Berlin, we are, of course, in Germany, we are following this young man throughout his, I guess, average day. I hope that my average day doesn't have this many absurd moments in it. But again, it still felt like this could be this one dude's just a really bad, ridiculous day. Um, he is just this young kid. He is... Uh, law school aged. He is kind of a below average everyday Joe, if that makes any sense. Um, there's nothing immediately outstanding about him. And yet there's nothing thoroughly off-putting about him either. Um, I saw a ton of critics compare this film with a Woody Allen film. And I I'm not a big Woody Allen fan. I have never really enjoyed the style of his films. And yet I kind of see where they're coming from. That nebbishy everyday kind of character. I, I could definitely see Nico being that, being perceived as that. I still think that Nico is inherently more likable or at least more sympathetic than pretty much any Woody Allen male hero that I've watched, but, um, I definitely can see that comparison. So if you do happen to be a Woody Allen fan, you might really like that aspect of the characters within this movie. And, and because they are, there, there are multiple characters that I could say have something comparable to a character you might find in a Woody Allen film. Anyway, Nico, this every man, he, like so many young people, is at a point in his life where he's kind of lost. There is no direct trajectory. He knows what his, the expectations are, he, where he should be. He should be in law school. He should be following these rules. He should be 
doing these very specific things and yet he neither wants nor feels he's able to be on those particular paths. And, you know, all of this sort of culminates in this one day that we're living with him. Um, he meets, or he meets with friends, he meets with random people within this city that he absolutely loves. And each moment is its own little, little uh, micro universe of ridiculous interactions. And he, the young man who plays Nico does such a good job of making it seem like nothing is too out of the ordinary for him. Yes, he meets ridiculous, ridiculous, outlandish people, but it's not an experience he doesn't have on any given day of the week. And I think that sort of laissez-faire attitude within such outrageous circumstances is kind of brilliant. I it's it's it would be very hard to play that. Um, but he does a great job. And then all of the side characters, those actors they really have to commit to being lunatics and they do. And again, you have like this very real organic performance that you're watching on screen, even if they're doing outrageous things. Um, you have these interactions that we, I was just talking about between Nico and all of these different people and they all can spin on a dime. They can go from outrageous to tender to outrageous to completely out of the realm of reality. And they can go from ridiculous to utterly tragic, just, just like that. It, it really is so impressive. The performances, the story writing, it, everything. I, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed this movie. It was Again, one of those films where I couldn't not react to scenes. Like, I couldn't help but laugh. I couldn't help but cry. It was it was just a really, really surprising film. Uh, so if you're looking for something that is unusual, that has quirk like crazy, that still manages to be one of those slice-of-life kinds of movies without being bland or boring check out A Coffee in Berlin. It is a very interesting film watching experience. Um, and that is available again on both Hoopla Digital and on Canopy. You won't regret it. Ah, this next recommendation is for all those Hallmark romance movie lovers out there. This one's available on Hoopla Digital and it is for a movie called Cup of Love. Um, don't you just love Hallmark Hall of Fame style movie titles? They are punny and wonderful and terrible, all rolled into one. Anyway, in Cup of Love, we follow Zoe Walker. She's a food scientist for this big coffee donuts conglomerate, clearly designed to be like a Dunkin' or a Krispy Kreme. Um, the work culture is insanely toxic, uh, and you get that within the first couple minutes of the movie. Um, but it is still really fun to watch. It's, it's, you've got outrageous characters and ridiculous situations already at the very beginning. Now, she is sent off to Columbia to design a new unbeatable flavor. Um, she's got to find a coffee that is better than anything anyone else out there is offering. Easy peasy, right? Um, and the move, the crux of the movie is all about that journey how she's going to get and find and develop this flavor that nobody else has. So when she reaches Columbia, she ends up finding the taste that she's been searching for. But the farm on which the beans are harvested and grown and made, um, and the roaster himself is kind of this really difficult young man named Diego Valdez. Um, he is definitely reluctant to work with her at first for a lot of reasons. Um, and of course you've got them butting heads from the first time they meet and that sort of difficult relationship blossoms into love. Nobody is surprised by this. If you've ever watched a Hallmark Hall of Fame movie, or if you've ever watched a romance film in general, 
No one is surprised by that. <laughs> um, I would be more surprised if that didn't happen, to be perfectly honest. Um, and so the rest of the movie is just really about the two of them finding their way to one another and how they are going to overcome some difficulties that they, they have to face, some legitimate challenges, uh, along with, you know, roadblocks that they make themselves. Uh, it's definitely not one of those films that's going to change the way we look at movies. It's, it's not. Like, that's not what these kinds of films are supposed to do. These films follow a very H-E-A, happily ever after, trajectory. Girl meets boy. Boy and girl fight a lot. <laughs> boy and girl fight a lot because they discover that they like each other and eventually they end up happily ever after. I mean, like, that's that's just... The, those are those points and you have to hit those to get to the happily ever after, but you do. And it doesn't matter how predictable that trajectory is. It's really about like the chemistry of the character of the actors and the characters, which they've got in spades here. Uh, both the young woman who plays Zoe and the young man who plays Diego, they're both definitely good and beautiful together on screen. Um, and like the story is just different enough to make it a little bit more interesting than your average, you know, everyday romance that you would normally see. Like I've seen so many like shopkeeper does this thing within this particular kind of romantic comedy. So having her go out into the world uh, to a location that we don't see very often in general. I mean, I don't really know how many romantic comedies I've seen take place in Colombia. Um, not that many to be perfectly honest. I don't even know if I've seen one that takes place in Colombia before, but that marks a new point for me. Um, you know, it, it's the little things that make each of them worthwhile. And, and I do think there's enough that makes this just a little bit different to really strongly recommend it, especially if you do happen to be a coffee lover. It's nice to see something that you might love play such a prominent role within a movie and it's such an ordinary movie at that. So if you're looking for something light, fluffy, romantic with a happily ever after, check out Cup of Love. It's on Hoopla. It's a lot of fun and it just is a quick watch that, you know, is great for a night when you just want to kick back and relax. So again, Cup of Love available on Hoopla. Moving on to my next recommendation, this one is available on Hoopla Digital, and it's for a documentary that's a little bit different from the other ones we've talked about before. This one is called Hot Coffee, and it's actually all about tort reform, which I find absolutely fascinating. Um, Hot Coffee talks about a number of different court cases, uh, but really focuses in on the case where the woman ordered a hot coffee from McDonald's, uh, ends up spilling it on herself and then sues McDonald's uh, for damages. Now, I remember when this happened, it was all over the news. It was also all over late night television where this particular situation was the butt of every joke you could possibly imagine. I mean, and really from the facts that I had gleaned at the time, I remember thinking, I do remember thinking, lady, it's hot coffee. Uh, but what's really interesting is, you know, this documentary does an excellent job of laying out facts. Uh, it definitely has a point of view. I mean, there's no getting around that. It's not neutral by any means. But it does talk about things that were absolutely lost in the mix when this became a big hot button issue in the news. Um, the woman did, in fact, order a hot coffee from McDonald's, but she was not driving the car. Her grandson was. Um, they were not in a moving vehicle at the time she spilled the coffee. They had parked. She did have the coffee cup between her legs to hold it steady while she opened the lid. Uh, but she slipped and upended the coffee onto her legs. She was wearing sweatpants. It wasn't like a dress or anything. Um, but the sweatpant fabric absorbed the coffee and kept it against her skin. And she ended up with third degree burns. Um, third degree burns are incredibly serious things. Um, and when you get down to some of the other facts of what happened, uh, McDonald's at the time, especially, was told to keep their coffee at a certain temperature between 180 and 190 degrees. This is higher than the vast majority of 
coffee makers at home would make their coffee. Um, and that was, uh, according to McDonald's in the, in the documentary, uh, what fans of their product wanted because they wanted the extra hot coffee. And, but they had a number of people every year who, who were burned, who, who received burns from the coffee spilling, but that percentage was too low for them to change a policy that was in place that pleased a number of other people. So there's this question of, is this willful negligence, uh, you know, is, is that really a valid argument in keeping the coffee at this particular temperature? Additionally, it talks, the documentary talks about the trajectory of the case. She initially wanted, um, $20,000 to pay for her hospital bills because they were substantial. She ended up having to get skin grafts. I mean, hospital stays are not cheap ever. We all know that. Um, she, she wanted her medical bills paid. And then her daughter's, her daughter took off time from work in order to take care of her, her to take care of her. So she wanted those things covered, the loss of payment for work. And then, um, the medical bills she also wanted McDonald's to change the temperature of the coffee to, to, to adjust the coffee so that it wasn't dangerously hot. Um, they instead offered at that time, $800, obviously a vast difference. Uh, and things just continued to escalate. Uh, so when we hear about this case and we hear how this woman bought hot coffee, she, she got over $2 million rewarded to her. That's also not quite true in that, like, that particular number was shifted, uh, by the, by the judge. I mean, she, she was there, there's just a lot to the case. So, you know, it was frustrating to watch. It was very frustrating to watch because again, I was totally part of that little echo chamber that kept saying how ludicrous the situation was, you know? And I, I'm so frustrated even with myself for just not looking at the case at the time and just, you know, looking at AP and, and we're talking about real newspapers that talked about things. Like it, I'm not talking about like little niche, like we're not talking about Twitter. Um, so, so even from reputable, case, reputable sources, not all of the news was being reported about these particular cases. So it, it it's just a very interesting and, frustrating documentary. There are other cases that it covers as well that are equally frustrating. Uh, but I do recommend if you do watch this to look into the facts, the actual history of the situation, so you can form your own opinions. Uh, but what I did really appreciate about this was that it did make me want to look at court cases that I remember feeling very strongly about in the past or being dismissive and derisive about. Um, so if you're interested in tort reform, if you're interested in recent history uh, involving like how the justice system and the court system works, check out Hot Coffee. It is a really interesting watch. I mean, I was absolutely glued to my TV while this was playing and I this was not one of the ones that was high up on my list to watch, to go through, uh, when I was checking out different random films, but it ended up being favorite is a hard way to describe this one just because it was so frustrating. Uh, but it was one of the ones that I feel so strongly about at the end of watching my whole list. So again, hot coffee available on Hoopla. Fascinating watch. Okay, my final recommendation for this week is available on Canopy, and it's for the documentary Barista. Now, I love documentary films like this. Uh, in Barista, we're following a handful of baristas who are all preparing for the World Barista Championships. I love anything that can spin an artisan career into a competition. Um, it definitely gives a documentary this extra level of kinetic energy because you're heading on this trajectory to somewhere, you know, it's, it, it's not just a day in the life, which I love. I love documentaries that just trace an artisan's day to day experience because that's absolutely fascinating. And you 100% could make an incredible documentary about a barista's day to day life, whether it be about all of the intricacies 
uh, of the career itself, which you get a piece of in this particular film, you absolutely explore what their day-to-day -day experience would be. But it adds that extra layer of this tension. You know, uh, they are headed towards what is considered to be the Olympics of coffee making. And, and you see all of the anxieties that are building up. You see the excitement. Uh, you see the highs and the lows. And you don't necessarily get that in the slice of life's kind slice of life kind of films that um, usually populate uh, documentaries that follow food or beverage. Um, adding that extra layer, that that competitive edge, really makes this one so so exciting to watch. Um, you get a lot of the little quirks of personality as well that you don't necessarily get in A Slice of Life. You see how, not the threat of competition, but like the, the overhanging tension brings out like the little quirks to the people's personalities. And, and that I think makes this very, very unusual. And I, and I love that. I love that about this. I, I couldn't believe when the movie was over, it had gone that fast. Um, it also is just really informative. I did not realize that there was a world championship of coffee prior to this documentary. I mean, I guess it makes sense. They're like pizza making competitions. There's, there, there, there's, there's something to give com competitive edge to pretty much everything. So I don't know why it never dawned on me, but there's just something really interesting about giving a room full of co coffee and caffeine addicts, like this extra push. <laughs> it's, it's like getting an extra shot of espresso. Uh, and, and you ne don't necessarily know what's coming. And that's, that was really exciting to watch, to be honest. I, I had such a good time watching this and the people they chose to follow that it was, the, they were very smart casting choices, uh, made for this because you wanted to know more about each one. They weren't, super outrageous people, but they were also super interesting in, in, in a way that, you know, you wanted to see what's going to happen to this person next. Um, and I don't know that that always is the case with this kind of, um, a, a documentary tracing of a competition. I, I think sometimes you just, you have a villain and you have her heroes and heroines that you want to have win. And I'm not saying that you don't necessarily gravitate to some of these people more than the others, but there's no like mustache twirler and you 100% get that. If you watch, if you've ever watched like a, a, a cooking competition on the Food Network, 100% you almost always get a mustache twirler, almost always. And that's not the case here. Um, I feel like this is more like Great British Bake Off where you want people to do their absolute best and whoever wins, whatever, it's not, that's not what this is about. It's really about the journey, which I know is like a super fluffy way to look at it, but it really is. That is, that is this, that is this documentary. That's all there is to it. That's this documentary. So if you like coffee, if you like those sort of reality competitions that are more in line with Great British Bake Off than say Cutthroat Kitchen or something like that, check out Barista. Um, it made my it made me feel good about my love for coffee and caffeine rather than like ashamed and sad about them. It 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 was just like again swapping stories with somebody who has a similar interest with that that I do. So again, available on Canopy Barista, excellent excellent documentary. You'll love it, I'm sure. Okay, so that was all of my caffeine fueled film picks for this week. Um, I had such a fun time putting these together. Seriously, it, it, it was way more enjoyable than I ever even expected it to be. So I hope that you were able to find a film that you are interested in checking out as well. Um, if not, remember, please, please, please check out our video services. We have so many amazing, amazing video options available on there. Um, Canopy's just made deals with both Warner Brothers and MGM, so they're adding new titles every single week, and they are some huge titles. Um, of course, we always have the ever-reliable 
CleanNet Overdrive. We have Hoopla, which does an excellent job of throwing in tons of different kinds of movies along with phenomenal British television series. All of these, as always, available entirely for free with the use of your Milan Berlin Library card. And with that, I am going to go ahead and sign off. Thank you so much for joining me this week, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye!